I don't want to leave this topic without at least briefly visiting something about antibiotic stewardship in this country and perhaps on the, in the globe. And the overuse, perhaps the improper use of antibiotics, um, how does that impact the incidence and severity of C. diff? My sense is we're seeing more. Uh, I keep hearing we're using more antibiotics in, in, in animal husbandry and whatever. Are they related? Uh, are people getting too much antibiotics over the counter, not over the counter, but over the phone, if you will, out in the community? Uh, where does all this fit? Yeah, so I think that the short answer is yes, we are. Thank you, we can go home now. <laughs> we're using uh, too many antibiotics and we should use fewer and that antibiotics do impact C. diff infection, and they seem to, kind of <clears throat> interestingly, impact it at every level. So if you look at hospitals, hospitals that use a lot of antibiotics and compare them to hospitals that don't use a lot of antibiotics, the ones that use a lot of antibiotics have a lot more C. diff, even after adjusting for other factors. If you look at it at the ward level, so you look at one ward and another ward, adjust for all other factors, the ward that uses more antibiotics, there's gonna be more C. diff on that ward. We even looked at it at the individual patient level. And if you look at patients in consecutive rooms, patients coming into rooms, the, at the room level, the amount of antibiotics received by the room actually seems to impact the next patient's risk for C. diff. You so do realize is, there are no more wards, right? There are <laughs> units. Floors then. Floors, yes. Um, so this has sort of been likened to like the inverse of herd immunity. Most people are familiar with this right. concept for vaccines, but it's, this is kind of the, uh, the downside to that. So, a lot of uh, programs have been looked at to decrease rates of C. diff infection, and almost no matter how you try it, as long as you're trying something, you can get your rates down. But the cornerstone of all of these programs is antibiotic stewardship and using less antibiotics. And you can decrease the, 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 the rate of antibiotic resistant C. diff as well, right? You don't start selecting out bad C. diff. Well, the amount of there's negligible vancomycin resistance to C. diff, as we talked about. It's debatable whether there are uh, are some case reports of a higher MIC to metronidazole okay. with C. diff. So it's not so much um, antibiotic resistance that's the problem as that you've created an environment where there's just more C. diff around, more colonized patients, patients shedding more C. diff spores in their stools by using more antibiotics. Okay, well, let's what, talk what, about it. What I'm you sorry, suggested has actually been done with clindamycin control. Okay. And, and some C. diffs have got resistance to clindamycin, it's, it's sort of the poster child for C. diff. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I remember, <laughs> I mean, just, just to take us back, I remember the introduction of clindamycin. And the first thing we heard was clindamycin causes C. diff. It well, generates it causes these, clindamycin well, colitis. Well, that's not what we heard, and then we figured it out. <laughs> right. But it was clindamycin, C. diff, pseudomembranous colitis, right. back to clindamycin. But, but it's, not, it's not surprising, you know, that C. diff is such a big epidemic now, because we live in an antibiotic-rich society. That's you know, my there's point. There's a requirement. Requ you know, the recent data suggests that 30, 50 percent of, of antibiotic use is unnecessary, which we already know, viral infections treated with antibiotics. And a second component to that, by the way, that we shouldn't forget is that when you use an antibiotic, don't use it forever. Because much of the burden of antibiotics, much of the unnecessary use is actually prolonging courses beyond what they, where All they right. should be. So let, let's run through a few bullet points here before, before we leave. First of all, um, you mentioned Fewer antibiotics, the antibiotics are used for shorter, shorter courses. Is that for all community physicians? I mean, do you understand the position of a community physician who gets a call from a patient, a patient he knows or she knows well, says, I've got this, I want an antibiotic, and this community physician knows. The, if you don't give it, it's going to call somebody else. Well, but, 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 but the, the, the answer should be, uh, well, so one of the problems is spending time with your patient and, and actually explaining that to the patient. Uh, but, but I think that if you do that, and, and if the patient understands that they're not going to benefit from an antibiotic, they're not going to request it. If you decided to use an antibiotic, use the shortest effective dose. Don't use it forever. In the past, the thinking was, you prolong the antibiotic, only good things can happen because you know right. it's more of a good thing, but now we know that's not necessarily the case. Okay, and are there some antibiotics specifically that you want to cut back on? If you could talk to, and you are talking to, primary care physicians, you are talking to the physician community in America, what antibiotics would you warn them to avoid, if at all possible? <laughs> Well, you know, it's hard to avoid one class of antibiotics, and all antibiotics have some benefit. As we heard from Daniel and others, uh, fluoroquinolones, so cipro, levofloxacin, some people call it vitamin L, as it became so uh, prevalent in, in, in the community as well as hospitals. And we know that these are amongst the highest risk factors for 
uh, Sudif. And, 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 and there are also, as we learned recently, could be risky antibiotics in terms of the heart and, and some other risk, uh, uh, risks such as the tendons and so forth. And that's so- That's with levofloxacin. That's with, with, with levofloxacin, uh, moxifloxacin okay. um, as well. Uh, uh, so uh, avoiding using fluoroquinolones when they're not necessary, when you have an alternative that's just as effective, uh, that, 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 that the patient could be treated effectively, avoiding using fluoroquinolones would probably be your uh, first step. Avoid Third generation cep cephalosporins okay. are also a big risk factors. Not that many are being used in a community, more so in the hospital, uh, but this would be another risk group. Clindamycin, we already talked about. There are still some, mostly dentists um, and, and gynecologists and obstetricians, at least from my experience, that use a lot of clindamycin. Well, we know that there are treatment alternatives uh, okay. that are less risky. Uh, that would be another group.